50. Consider the decomposition of CaCO3 solid into CaO solid and CO2 gas. What is the equilibrium partial pressure of CO2 at room temperature? Okay, you got it. So first things first is they're trying to describe a reaction, right? We're decomposing calcium carbonate into these two products. So that's the first thing that I'm going to write out. So I know that I have Ca, CO3, that's a solid, and this will decompose, aka break down into the calcium oxide, CaO, that's a solid, plus the carbon dioxide. So as I'm writing this, I'm just going to make sure that it's balanced, and it uh, looks pretty balanced to me, so we're good to go there. Now, the only thing that they told us was they just wanted to find out what the equilibrium partial pressure of CO2 is. So I'm just going to say that at the end of the day, we want to find out what the pressure of CO2 is. Now, anytime that they say partial pressure, partial pressure just means that you're finding a pressure for one substance in a mixture of substances, right? So a partial pressure of CO2 just means that you're literally just solving for the pressure of CO2. All right. Well, we don't really have much information, but we know that partial pressures or pressures in general can come from a equilibrium constant, right? So maybe we can, you know, uh, write a balanced, not a balanced equation, but write an expression that will link up pressures with equilibrium constants. And in this case, since we're solving for the pressure, I have to know what the K P is, right? P stands for pressure. And remember, any equilibrium constant, right, is always products divided by reactants. And remember, only gases and aqueous are allowed. So in this um, expression, the two products are calcium oxide and CO2 gas. But since calcium oxide is a solid, we will not include it in our KP expression because no solids allowed. So this would be equal to the pressure of CO2 divided by, let's see, because remember it's products divided by reactants, but calcium carbonate is also a solid. So I can't include that in the denominator as well. And look here, the equilibrium constant Kp equals the partial pressure of CO2. So this is a piece of information that we need to know. This is like the link to find out what, you know, what the answer to the question is. So basically we just have to find out what the Kp is. Now let's link another formula. Now we're going to talk about free energy because there's a formula that will link equilibrium constant. And maybe I'll pull this up right now. Maybe I'll bring this over here. There is a formula that links equilibrium constant with Gibbs free energies, right? Gibbs free energies, the appendix values at the back of the book. So equilibrium constant K, it does not matter whether you're looking for a KC, KP, KA, KB, it's all going to be the same. So we could just smack on a KP here. It doesn't matter. But this equals the E value on the calculator raised to the negative delta G divided by R times T. So let's see what, uh, you know, information that we know. Well, the R value is always going to be constant. R is 8.314. And the R value has units that tells us what units are allowed in this expression. 8.314 joules per mole times Kelvin. So only joules are allowed for your delta G, and only Kelvin is allowed for temperature. Now, they didn't specifically give us a temperature, but they did say that it was at room temp. And room temperature is always... Uh, 25 degrees Celsius. So, which when converted into Kelvin is 298.15 if you want to be specific, Kelvin. So that's the number that I'm going to use for my temperature. So the temperature is 298.15 Kelvin because Kelvin and Kelvin have to match. Celsius is not allowed in the formula. All right, so now we just have delta G to deal with. I need to find out what the overall delta G is for this whole entire reaction. 
Well, that's why I went in the back of the textbook to find out the individual delta G values. So let's just get this set up. So here's the delta G values. And maybe I'll just put like a colon here. So the delta G of carbon, uh, not carbon, calcium carbonate is negative 1081.8. For calcium oxide, it's negative 603.3. And for um, carbon dioxide, it's negative 394.36. And now I can get rid of this. And maybe I will bring this a little bit. That's that's good for now. Okay. So now there's another formula, right? How am I going to take these individual delta G's and find out what the overall delta G is for the entire formula? Well, that's this right here, right? Delta G for the whole entire reaction, Rxn is reaction. And keep in mind that these little notches up top here, they just mean standard state. You could use the um, numbers in the back of the textbook. So this is just going to equal the sum. So we're going to add up all the delta G's of the products minus the sum of all the delta G's of the reactants. So it's essentially products minus reactants. Now, are these values going to be the same or are they going to change? Well, it goes by the coefficients. But in our case, in each one of them, we only had one of each substance. So technically, I would just take all my values and times it by one, just kind of show you it's good practice. But they're going to be the same number, right? But now you just have to sum them up. If you have more than one you know, product, you have to add them. It's literally CaO plus CO2. So this value plus this one. I don't have to add anything on the reactant side because I only have one reactant. So the sum basically of the reactant side would still be negative 1,081.4. And now let's see what the sum of the products is. I'm going to say negative 603.3 minus 394.36. And I'm just checking to make sure that I didn't input anything incorrectly. That looks good to me. Negative 997.66. And now we can do products minus reactants. So delta G for the whole entire reaction would be negative 997.66 minus the negative 1,081.4. So delta G for the whole entire reaction would be this number. I'm just going to grab it minus a negative 1081.4. And we get a positive. So this is non-spontaneous, 83.74. And the units here would be in kilojoules because these ones that we multiplied, the coefficients, those are moles. So the back of the textbook said kilojoules per mole, but the moles cancel out. So you're just left with kilojoules. Okay, so now we have the delta G value. And actually, maybe I won't highlight that because that's not the answer, but I have the delta G value over here. Now, the R value said only joules are allowed. So I first have to take my kilojoules and just convert it into joules. But kilojoules to joules, that's okay. All you got to do is just times by a thousand. Similarly, just take the decimal, move it to the right three spots. So this would be eight. 374 and then one zero. So 83,740 joules. And that's what's going up here. So 83740. And now let's plug everything in. K equals E, all raised to the negative fraction. The negative is in the formula, so I have to keep that there. Let's just bring this down a little bit. So 83740, and then I'm just going to divide it by my two values. I have 8.314, and then I have room temperature, which is always 298.15. What I would do is I would just simplify this into one number. So I could just take the E raised to that value. So let's see. Now there's a negative, so I'm going to say negative 83740. 
divided by 8.314. And now since I'm not using parentheses in my calculator, but I want to put that 298 in the denominator, I'm going to press divide. If you put times, the calculator will think that it's in the numerator. And then press enter. And now we get a bunch of numbers. So this is k equals e raised to the negative 33.7822 with more numbers. I'm not going to round it because it's not the final answer. So when I say second ln, which is the e button, and I grab those numbers, there you go. So we'll say maybe, oops, we'll say maybe two sig figs. Actually, three sig figs. Doesn't really matter, right? Um, so let's do, let's see, 2 point, I guess 2.13 times 10 to the negative 15th. And now, remember, this could be any k value. We specifically wanted it to be kp, so let's just make it kp, right? But remember, the equilibrium constant in this case equals the partial pressure of the CO2. For the kp value, there are no units. However, since they're equal to each other, the partial pressure of the CO2 is 2.13 times 10 to the negative 15th. And now since we're talking about pressure, I have to use a unit. And just know that the units that are allowed in a K expression for pressure is ATM. So this has to be an ATM. And that is your final answer. And there you go. That's it. Thank you so much for viewing the video. I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you for being part of this community. We're almost at 25,000 subscribers, and it's all because of you guys. So thank you for watching the video, for sharing it with your friends, your classmates, your teachers even. Thank you so much. Let's keep learning, and I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.